It's a rivalry that dates all the way back to the 1920s. And tonight from Paul Snow Stadium in Jacksonville, Alabama, it is the 62nd meeting between the Trojans of Troy State and the Gamecocks of Jacksonville State. Hello, everybody. I'm Mickey Shadricks along with Phil Paramore. And, Phil, there are lots of great rivalries in the Deep South, some of those being played this weekend. This Troy State-Jack State rivalry, pretty intense in its own right. We're exactly right. These are each other's arch rivals, so to speak. Troy State would desperately like to beat Jacksonville. And, of course, the Gamecocks would like nothing nothing better than to put a damper on the Troy State season and in what has been a five-game losing streak in this series. Troy State, Phil, already wrapped up the automatic bid in the SFL in the Division I AA playoffs, but a road victory tonight would really help the Trojans avoid a possible long road trip in the first round of the playoffs. To get that win, they need to rush the football efficiently tonight, and that starts with Demontre Carter. Well, you're right. Once again, Mickey, certainly Troy State would like to have the home field advantage in the first round of the playoffs, and if they're able to gather that tonight, Demontre Carter will be one of the key reasons. He's a rhythm runner. He needs to get off early. Troy State will try and get him in the mix very soon. He hurts you outside on the ground and certainly out of the backfield as well. Meanwhile, for Jacksonville State, good improvement this year under first-year head coach Jack Crow. And Phil, for the Gamecocks this year, it's been pretty much as goes quarterback Reggie Stancil, so goes Jacksonville State. Well, you're right. No better example than that than last week in the big Gamecock victory over Division 1A Louisiana Lafayette as Reggie Stancil accounted for almost 300 yards total offense all his own. He's one of the focal points of the Troy State defensive game plan. They must stop Stancil tonight. It is a rivalry that's been dominated by Troy State as of late. The Trojans have won the last five matchups, 10 of the last 13. The battle for the old school bell resumes tonight from Paul Snow Stadium in just a moment. As a little girl growing up in South Africa, I dreamed of meeting my Prince Charming and having the perfect wedding. Hi, I'm Jane Tregessa. I traveled all the way to America to find my husband, but you won't have to search far to find the perfect little wedding chapel at Union Station. We're located just minutes from Birmingham and Jasper on Highway 78. You will find our Victorian train dining cars perfect for a romantic reception, rehearsal dinner, or any special occasion. Our gift shop carries everything you will need for your wedding, including invitations, cake toppers, bride books, and gift baskets. Call the Little Wedding Chapel at Union Station at 648-7858. It is the only call you will need to make. We will take all the stress out of your special day and handle all your arrangements from invitations to your honeymoon. We will have a special package to suit every bride and groom. Buster Miles, Sheila Lane, Buster Miles, Ford. Uh, I've had work done with both places, and I would recommend them to anybody. And they give them good service and be reasonable about it. Every time our car needs service, we come to Buster Miles, and they take care of us right away. They make you feel like you're part of a family, and we really appreciate that. Buster Miles, Ford, treats you like you want to be treated, whether it's service or sales. They treat you right. TV24, the Jacksonville State University Fighting Gamecocks and the Alabama State Troopers want to remind you to always wear your seatbelt and please never drive after you've been drinking. We care about our fans and want you to be at all the games. The life you save might be your own. So remember, always buckle up, don't drink and drive, and go, go Gamecocks! 
And we're back at Paul Snow Stadium on a very cold and rainy, you might say sleety night. The weather definitely is going to play a factor in this football game tonight. Troy State Trojans, of course, under the leadership of Larry Blakeney in his ninth year at Troy State. He is the winningest coach in Troy State history with an overall mark that you saw a moment ago, 88 victories, 28 losses, and one tie. Meanwhile, his counterpart across the way, Jack Crow in his first season here at Jacksonville State. The Gamecocks showing markedly in market improvement this year over last season. Four victories, five losses. Crow, of course, uh, been at some of the premier programs in the country. And, Phil, what's interesting, these two guys actually were on the same staff together back in the early 80s. Well, you're right, Mickey, and they enjoyed an awful lot of success under Pat Dye at Auburn, actually with Coach Crow in the press box part of the time, Coach Blakeney on the field in concert. They called the plays for Pat Dye during that long stretch of SEC superiority in the mid to late 80s. There you get a look at the JSU sophomore quarterback, Reggie Stancil, who we highlighted in the open. Reggie Stancil, a threat running and throwing the football. Jacksonville State hopes to get a good game out of him in some very difficult field conditions tonight. As we mentioned in the open, Troy State dominating this series as of late. They've won the last five meetings. Both teams come into this game riding winning streaks. The Trojans have won their last five in a row. Meanwhile, the JSU Gamecocks have won their last two games in a row. Crowd on their feet here, Phil, and the weather, of course, is not only going to play a factor in the conditions here, but it's also, I think, affecting the uh, the crowd. But still, despite the conditions we've got, good many people showing up here at Paul Snow Stadium. This I evening. have to tell you, I don't know how it looks where you're watching at home or wherever you may be this evening, but the conditions are absolutely miserable here at Paul <laughs> Snow Stadium. And I think it's a wonderful testament for how these two schools fans feel about them for this many to have showed up on such a dismal evening. Well, Jacksonville State will be kicking off to Troy State. There you get a look at Brad Hopkins, the senior kicker for JSU. Back deep for the Trojans, Demontre Carter along with Jonathan Carter. Troy State's had a lot of success with the kickoff return game thus far this year, Mickey. In fact, the kicking game, one of Troy State's strong suits. We'll get into that a little bit later on. And you got to figure special teams could definitely play a factor in these type of weather conditions tonight. Benisi will fill the kick and return it out to about the 34, 35 yard line where Troy State will take over first and 10 from there. And now let's take a look at the Cooter Brown offensive starting lineups for Troy State. The offensive line will be Rice, McAlilly, Carruthers, Currington, and Jordan. And in the backfield, Demontre Carter, Thad Bouton, the wide receiver, Slipper and Carter, Adrian Moore, the tight end from nearby Oxford, Alabama. And of course, the quarterback, Brock Nutter. First and 10 for Troy State. Play action, pass on first down. Nutter going deep, and he's got Carter wide open. And Troy State will strike quickly on the very first play from scrimmage. Well, they set that play up with a play action fake. A great job by Brock Nutter of faking the sweep to Demontre Carter and the Gamecock defense sitting on the run that time on the very first play from scrimmage. There you see the excellent play fake. Brock Nutter fools the defensive backs and Jonathan Carter slips behind the uh, Gamecock corner. Eric Eriles McCullough, I should say, and Troy State's on the board early. Just exactly what Jacksonville State wanted to avoid, Mickey. What a start for the Trojans and think about the field conditions you've got here tonight Phil and Troy State comes out on first down and and throws deep and it works perfectly they ran a trick play last week on the first play from scrimmage against McNeese State a reverse that went for 60 plus yards they wound up turning the football over to McNeese State as we get a call here a penalty we're going to get uh, Jacksonville State for a uh, personal foul I believe but Troy State of course will decline that it was not a dead ball infraction but to finish the point Troy State tried to dictate the tempo early last week wound up turning the football over didn't get any points out of it but they do here tonight and so the extra point of tip upcoming from Lawrence Tynes and it's good so Troy State 
shocks the home crowd here at Paul Snow Stadium. And with less than a minute going by, the Trojans on top of the Gamecocks here early, 7 to nothing. Back to Paul Snow Stadium after this timeout. hospitality in a historic Victorian setting in downtown Anston, Alabama. The Victoria, a country inn, restaurant, and hotel. For reservations, call 800-260-8781. Ideas Plus can help you with all your embroidery, screen printing, and promotional needs. We offer a wide variety of apparel, computer mouse bands, pins, plus thousands of other items that can have your organization's name on them. Ideas Plus is a huge selection of merchandise for fundraiser projects, advertising, and to show your school spirit. Ideas Plus is locally owned and operated and has been serving the area for seven years. We are located at 1013 Snow Street in Oxford. So when you're planning your next project, give us a call at Ideas Plus. fully understand the A++ superior financial rating Alpha received from the AM Best Company. You may not appreciate the top ratings awarded to Alpha by Standard & Poor's or Moody's Investor Service. But in times of need, the significance of Alpha's strong financial position Alpha has taken care of everything will be easy to grasp. For insurance protection you can depend on, call the A++ Company. Call Alpha. Monday, August 16th, four classic hits DJs go missing. And never mind, we found them. Z, 93.1, more classic hits, more ways to win. Join Wild Bill in the morning with the Zoo Crew, Randy McDowell and Suzanne Witt. Then spend the afternoon with Steve, the Case Man Casey. It's the all-new classic hits, Z, 93.1. And here's how the battle for the old school bell began tonight, Phil, with a huge play from scrimmage for Troy State. Well, you can see Jacksonville's McCullough already realizing he had been beaten when Troy State did not leave the football off to Demontre Carter. By that time, Jonathan Carter had slipped behind him, and the Trojans are staked to an early lead. And Tynes with the deep kickoff, and it drives JSU's Nika Willis back in around the goal line in a... Very good coverage for Troy State as they will pin JSU back deep inside their own 15-yard line as Jacksonville State will get it for their first offensive possession. Here's the Cooter Brown offensive starting lineup for Jacksonville State. Up front, Little and Ward the tackles, Hogan and Sullivan the guards, and Adam Ross is the center. In the backfield, Rondi Rogers and Carlo James, Herman Bell and Quincy Bowie the wide receivers, Jimmy McCoy the tight end. And Reggie Stansel, the sophomore quarterback for Jacksonville State, who had such an outstanding game last week in the Gamecocks' road victory over Louisiana Lafayette. Stansel's numbers there on the year, throwing for almost 1,000 yards. Stansel, for his effort last week, named the SFL Player of the Week. He'll throw on first down, and that is Bowie, but he has no to go as the pursuit for Troy State was outstanding as the Trojans had about three or four defenders right on top of that play. Troy State has got an outstanding play from its linebackers as you see a look at the Troy State starters, Mickey. Up front, Betts, Williams, Humanora, and Vernon Marable. A good linebacking crew as well, led by Nazir Yamini, the leading tackler, over 100 tackles this year. He's joined by Colbert and McLean. And in the secondary, it's Phil Yall, Thompson, Archie, and Jackson. Second down for Jacksonville State from their own 16-yard line. Stancil, with some time, will now run it himself and gets out across the 20 to about the 22-yard line, taken down by Nick Colbert. And this will put the Gamecocks in a third and very short situation. Looks like a penalty across the way, Mickey. It's going to be difficult to pick up the uh, penalty markers on the field tonight because, as we mentioned in the open, it is very muddy, very soggy, and uh, once these 
flags get damp, they're going to be hard to see as well. And we get the call there against Jacksonville State, and the Gates say pretty good gain on that second down. As we look at the scoring drive for Troy State, pretty simple. One pass, Nutter to Carter, and in 12 seconds, the Trojans have a 7-0 lead. Well, I'm sure Jacksonville State's coaching staff, Coach Crow would have loved to have been able to set up business a little bit further upfield with this initial possession. They're bottled up here with a second and long situation after the penalty. Second and 13. Inauspicious beginning for Jacksonville State. The line of scrimmage is the 11. On the option play, here's the pitch to James, and James is hit at the line of scrimmage. Jimmy McClain there to stuff that play, and it's going to be third and long for JSU. As I mentioned, Mickey, in the open, Troy State's linebackers have just been outstanding this year. They are the leading tacklers on the team. As you see Jacksonville State displaying an awful lot of confidence in that option game, pitching the ball to the left side, even though they're backed up in the shadow of their own goalpost and the conditions extremely soggy. There you get a shot at Jimmy McLean, Nazir Yamini, and Nick Colbert, a trio of linebackers who between them account for about 60% of Troy State's stops on the year. Very athletic, get to the ball in a hurry. And Jacksonville State now in a difficult third and 13 situation. Stantzel lobs a pass up for Herman Bell. Boy, he had him open coming down the near sideline, but just overthrew him. So JSU fails to convert on third and long. It'll be fourth down, and Jacksonville State will now have to punt from around their own goal line as Troy State looks to get very good field position. I think Stancho had his receiver on that play, but the Troy State defender lost his footing just after Reggie let the ball go. I think he threw that away on purpose. Of course, obviously, had he known the Troy State defender was going to slip, he would have been able to complete that pass. And from the end zone, good rush by Troy, but Howard gets it out of there. And Skipper will let this one sail out of bounds, and the official marking it off down the far sideline. Troy State going to have great field position at around the JSU 33-yard line. The Trojans out in front early with about three minutes gone by in the first quarter. They lead JSU 7-0. I spent four of the best years of my life at Jacksonville State. I will always remember the good times and the friendships I made. That's why JSU is called the friendliest campus in the South. Our Alumni Association carries on the tradition. Maybe you've heard our name, but can't quite recall our face. the grand opening of the all-new Quintard Mall. There's something for everyone with exciting new stores, stadium-style movie cinemas, and a fabulous food court. Register for prizes to be given away every week, including our grand prize, an all-new 2000 GMC Sonoma truck from Ron Newton Pontiac Cadillac GMC. Get ready to shop at the all-new Quintard Mall in Oxford. Now open. And there you get a look at some of the Gamecock fans with the Whoop Troy. A slogan that been around Jacksonville State for a long time in this series. The Whoop Troy buttons are out in force, and the JSU defense needs to come up with a big stand here. As Troy State, great field position. A little trickery here on first down. Bouton throwing toward the end zone. Man is wide open, and Carter has his second touchdown catch in the first quarter. 
Well, Troy State goes into its bag of tricks again. That's the first time all year we've seen Thaddeus Bouton on the halfback option pass, although in that case, it's the fullback option pass as they sent Bouton around the right side here. As you see the pitch, a bit of misdirection on the fake reverse, freezing the linebackers. And by the time Bouton raised up and saw Carter, he couldn't believe how wide open he was. And just like that, two plays from scrimmage for Troy State, two long touchdown passes passes and the Trojans are staked to an early 13-0 lead. And the extra point up and good for Troy State. 14 to nothing. And still 11.57 to play in the first quarter. Carter with two quick touchdowns and I know that was a little misdirection, a little trickery there, but it's not as though Carter is any big secret, Phil. He's the leading receiver for this Troy State offense. Well, you're right, Mickey, but what set that play up was Jacksonville State's respect for Demontre Carter. Just as the first play from scrimmage froze the linemen, the linebackers, as well as the defensive backs because of the play fake to Demontre. That time, as you saw in the replay, it was Brock Nutter who faked the end around to Demontre Carter. They lined him up in the slot, brought him around, and when the Jacksonville Jacksonville defenders went with him. The pitch then to Bouton. There you see Demontre in motion, and as you see the Jacksonville State defensive lineman go with him, that leaves Bouton with all day to plant and throw, and not a bad toss for a fullback. Absolutely. I was just thinking the same thing, and those are sometimes the hardest to complete when you got the guy standing wide open downfield, and Demontre Carter. Not a factor yet in terms of running the football, but as you mentioned, yes. been a big factor as a decoy already in this ball game. Absolutely, and that is a tremendous job from an offensive standpoint by the Troy State coaches. That's two great plays to open the game with. Of course, dictated by good field position. You can't do that kind of stuff when you're backed up deep in your own territory. So again, Troy State to kick it off. Delvin Hughley back deep for Jacksonville State. And a very good kick by Tynes, Hughley from inside the five-yard line. Delvin looked as though he was going to throw that football and just tucked it under and got what he could, which was not much, out to about the 18-yard line, a 16-yard return. And once again, Jacksonville State will start first and 10 from inside their own 20-yard line. I think you're right, Mickey. It looked as if Hughley wanted to stop and throw a lateral across the field, but Troy State's defensive uh, the kickoff coverage guys kept their lanes and uh, stayed with their responsibilities and the play wasn't there. Shades of, of another battle down the road a few ways as you see the uh, Troy State scoring drive. Two snaps from scrimmage now. Total of 88 yards. Total offense. Two touchdowns. And so Jacksonville State will try to get something going offensively. The pitch to Rondi Rogers and he is swarmed under by a host of Trojan defenders as he gets maybe a yard to the 19. Well, this is a difficult quandary for Jack Crow to find himself in. These young Gamecocks hoping to pull an upset here. It was the Gamecocks that hoped to get an early lead here and put Troy State on their heels. Instead, two touchdowns down. Gamecocks got to be careful here on a big second down play deep in their own territory. Yeah, this type of weather, you know, both teams wanted to come out and have a good start, and I don't think you could have a better start if you were Troy State with what's happened here in the first quarter. Rogers now a little trickery. He'll throw. Herman Bell is open, and Bell went up and made a great leaping grab at the 41-yard line. First down for JSU. Well, both these offensive staffs pulling out all the stops here. That almost looked like a mirror of the play that Troy State just executed for a touchdown here. Uh, actually, that's a straight give on the uh, power sweep, it appears. No, there's the fake indeed. And the tailback raises up, and Rodgers finds a wide-open receiver behind the Trojan secondary. In fact, if that ball doesn't hang, Herman Bell's running out the end of the end zone. Great grab by little Herman Bell. Not very big, only 5'8", 188. Plays with a lot of heart and showed it there going up to get that pass. Stancil, decent gain on first down as he was tripped up by the Trojans' Nazir Yamini, but not before he fell forward for a gain of close to five yards. Boy, is he quick or what? He got to the corner that time and found only Chris Archie in his way. Gave him a little half leg and darted inside and a nice pickup for Stancil. So Jacksonville State, a little breathing room now as they've advanced the football from their 18-yard line out to the 46, where it will be second down and five.
Stancil rolling to his left. Runs it and gets first down yardage. Taken down from behind by Troy State's Nick Colbert, but Stancil showing us, Phil, what we talked about in the open, that ability to roll out and with the option of running or throwing the football. He gets outside the Troy State containment here. The Trojans had a little game going there with their defensive lineman. Shelton Felton actually has the outside containment, number 99 in your screen, and he is no match for Reggie Stancil in the speed department, and he picks up a big first down for the game time. Jacksonville State in Troy, Tate, Troy State territory, first time tonight at the 45-yard line. Option play, here's the pitch to Rodgers. Gets a good lead block from Carlo James, and Rondi Rodgers just ducks his head and barrels his way down to the 30-yard line, taken down by Troy State's Derek Jackson, but now Jacksonville State mounting something here offensively. Well, the key to that play, as we take another look at it, is the block by number 39, as you noted, Carlo James. Watch him wipe out Antonio Thompson right there. That's a pancake block, my friend, and it opened the running lane for the fine tailback from Jacksonville Rogers, and it's a first down once again for the Gamecocks. Great-looking drive they put together. Line of scrimmage is just outside the Troy State 30-yard line. Direct handoff up the middle, Rondi Rogers, and good surge by the offensive front for Jacksonville State as Rogers picks up four yards to the 26. Uh, really impressed with the drive here by Jacksonville State after being held to a loss on the first play after falling behind 14 to nothing. On this drive, they have put together an outstanding march, moving the ball down the field, mixing the pass with the run. The inside traps along with the option play on the corners, they've been very successful with it. Jacksonville State this year, in terms of offensive production, almost twice the yardage rushing than passing. Been very effective running the football this year, and Rondi Rogers has been a big reason for that. But on this play, Rogers only gets a couple of yards to about the 24, which will set up possession play for JSU, third and four. One of the stats that jumps out at you uh, when it comes to these two teams, very rarely do you see two teams meet in which one is plus 14 in the turnover ratio as we get another look here at the pickup by Rodgers. Troy State is plus 13 in turnover ratio, so between the two of them, they're plus 27 in turnover ratio. That is almost unheard of. Third and four. Stancil runs the option down the line, pitches to Rodgers. Rodgers racing for that first down marker, and it will depend on the spot. It looks as though he got a favorable spot and a first down. And the official does signal first down Jacksonville State. Good execution on the option, really by both teams there. As they hold Jacksonville State to a minimum gain, the way to stop the option is to either make Stancil make a decision within a couple of steps after he receives the snap or string it out all the way to the sideline. That's what the Trojans were able to do there, but not before the Gamecocks pick up another first down and continue this excellent looking drive. Another first down for the Gamecocks at the 20 yard line. Stancil to throw it on first down. Going for Cedric Allen, the big target, and oh, a great defensive play down around the goal line by the Trojans' Derek Jackson. Derek Jackson saved a touchdown there, as you are exactly right. Cedric Allen was open, running a corner pattern there, and he had Jackson turned around. We'll get a good look at it here as you see the token fake by Stancil floats it up and actually makes a good pass, but Jackson comes over despite being beaten on the play and knocks it down. Jackson pressed into starting duty, Mickey, because of not one but two season-ending injuries in the Trojan secondary. Second down and 10 after Stancil underthrew Cedric Allen in the end zone. And here's James, the fullback, getting a rare carry, and he picks up three, maybe four yards to about the 16-yard line, and that'll set up another possession play for JSU on this drive. Third down, we'll call it six yards to go. 
I don't think that'll be the last time we see Jacksonville State try and take advantage of the matchup with Big Cedric Allen. At 6'5", he towers over Jackson, who is listed at 5'9", and that may be stretching it a bit. That is a significant advantage as we actually see Allen come off the field on this snap, but look for them to go back to him before this game's over. Especially when there's man-on-man -man coverage, as yes. we saw a moment ago. Big play here. Third and six. Troy State, 10 men in the box here. Stancil fakes the pitch. Looking for Bowie, not open. Stancil will try to run it, and he's chased down from behind by the Trojans' Vernon Marable, the big 6'2", 260-pound junior defensive lineman out of Ashland, Alabama. And Stancil taken down at about the 15, so this will be fourth and five, and decision time for Coach Crow as we get another look at it. This is tremendous lateral movement by the big guy. Marable actually lost containment but ran Stancil down. That's a 260-pound guy running down the fine athlete, Stancil, and Marable shows great lateral movement there. Timeout on the field. Jacksonville State fourth and five. Phil evidently going to talk this over. Of course, they got a very capable field goal kicker in Brad Hopkins, but Coach Crow may be tempted to go for it here down by 14. Well, I think you're right, and I think that would be the correct decision, uh, although certainly you wouldn't want to move the ball this far and come up empty. The Gamecocks, as far as the ebb and flow of this game is concerned, could really answer in the affirmative. If they could get seven points here, we'd have ourselves a ball game once more. Good shot of Larry Blakeney on the sidelines there, who has been one of the winningest coaches in the country since arriving at Troy State 10 years ago and Troy State has made a living off its fine defensive football teams and as we saw the athleticism of Marable there they've done a very good job Nikki of getting out and finding the recruits that are left over here in the southeastern portions of the United States after the Division 1A schools take their pick of the litter. Very interesting to see Blakeney and Crow together on the same yeah. field here at this stadium after you know these guys coaching together at Auburn as we mentioned Crow at some of the schools he's been at uh, not many people would have laid good odds on us seeing that uh, here in the year 2000 but two great guys two great coaches two great friends going at it here this evening and coach Crow making the first big decision of the night he will send his offense out to go for it here on fourth and five from the Troy State 15. Stancil to put it in the air. Hits his tight end, McCoy, or Carlton, I should say, and it, the play did not fool Troy State. Nick Colbert right up to make the stop. Well, Nick Colbert has been a national defensive player of the year a couple of times this year. He also is the recipient of a National Football Foundation scholarship because of his academics, and here's one of the reasons why. He read that play from the get-go, and Jacksonville State had this play set up. Mickey, I think they score here if Nick Colbert doesn't make the play. As you see, there's no other white jerseys in the screen. That play was very well devised, but the Enterprise native Johnny on the spot, and he halts this drive. So Troy State takes back over first and 10 at their 21. And here finally is Demontre Carter touching the football. And good result as Carter rambles for 14 yards out to the 35-yard line and a Troy State first down. And typically that is not a good omen for Jack State because Demontre Carter is very much a rhythm runner. You see what he was able to view as he got the football there, a nice hole open up by the Troy State offensive line. And if Demontre Carter can get off early, Mickey, that often means trouble for the other team. And, of course, Carter saw significant playing time in Auburn a couple of years ago, transferring to Troy State. Been a huge addition to this Trojan football team as we've got a whistle. Official telling the JSU sideline to, to back up a bit. And now we've got a flag thrown. sideline warning being issued against Jacksonville State. Well, the third member of our crew tonight, Butch Barker, joining us down on the sideline. Conditions tonight were bad to begin with. They've already gotten worse. It's going to get worse and worse as this game continues. JSU came out with a defensive plan of putting a lot of people in the box, got burned early. We'll see if they change that plan. So first and 10, Troy State at the 35.
And here is the delay handoff to Carter. Play defended pretty well, making the tackle for Jacksonville State. Jimmy Johnson, Carter falling forward for about a yard gain. The get back coach falling down on his duties previous to that, making somebody's in charge of telling everybody, get back during the course of the entire game, fell down on his duties a moment. Just Jack a warning that time, but next time it be some yardage. Jacksonville State desperately needs to stop Troy on this possession. Troy spreading it out here, four receivers in this formation from the shotgun. Nutter swings it out to Carter out of the uh, backfield, and Demontre stays on his feet across the 40 to about the 42, taken down by Dell Gaines of Jacksonville State, and that'll put the Trojans in a third and four situation. Well-devised play that time by Troy State. As you see, Thaddeus Buton actually almost stepped in the way of the shotgun snap. Brock Nutter able to convert the pass, however, and complete it to Demontre Carter for a nice pickup. Third down and about five. Possession down for the Trojans. Yeah, you're right, Phil. Big play here. Jacksonville State needing to get this football back. There you see Nutter perfect on the night. Three of three, 103 yards, and a big touchdown pass on the first play from scrimmage. Fake play action. Nutter going to put it in the air. Got his man open. And that is Bouton out of the backfield. And it'll be first down Troy State. Big third down conversion play by Nutter that time. Troy State employs the fullback much more than most football teams around the country does. Thaddeus Bouton coming out of the backfield here, finding the opening. And it's basically... A little flare pass as uh, the linebacker can't get out there as we saw Buford closing on the play, but not until Bouton picked up a first down. Bouton has great hands as Troy State actually with three first downs now to four for Jack State. And a 14-0 lead. From the 50-yard line, Troy State, Nutter will come down the line. Gets nailed by Dale Gaines. Carter picks up the loose football, and E. Riles McCullough will come up from the secondary to take him down right at the line of scrimmage. What a big hit delivered from Dale Gaines on the quarterback, Brock Nutter. Almost forcing a turnover that time, as we mentioned earlier, in Troy State's efforts to defend the option. That's how you want to do it. Make the quarterback make the decision. Either pitch it or turn it up within the first couple of steps after the snap, as Troy State very fortunate to get possession of that football again after it was on the ground for what seemed like an awful long time. Gaines with an excellent play for Jacksonville State. Gaines actually missing some playing time at the beginning of the year due to an injury, but since his return to this Gamecock defense, been a big, big boost inside for Jacksonville State. Second down, some movement up front. Nutter will swing it out once again to DeMontre Carter, and Carter shows his niftiness. It's a couple of flags, actually three flags thrown on this play. Carter picked up close to 10 yards, but we will have to sort out the, uh, the array of penalties here. The officials huddled to talk this over. I'm not sure if they threw a flag on the same infraction or if they're all different. So offsetting penalties, Rick Bluamet, the referee tonight. So we will do this play over. The offsides was pretty obvious. Looked as though someone moved up front for Jacksonville State. So they'll put this back at the 50-yard line. Holding infraction came at the end of that play. I was unable to detect who the perpetrator may have been, but the back judge came in and tossed that flag. Second and 10 for the Trojans. Long snap count. Nutter may be changing the play. Jacksonville State showing blitz. And we had some early movement again. No flag this time. Carter is taken down by Rice right at the line of scrimmage. As JSU had a run blitz called that time, and it worked very effectively. That play looked out of rhythm from the beginning. I agree with you. It looked as if the Troy State right tackle may have moved to split second early, but no penalty marker down as Troy State now facing a third and a long 10. So Jacksonville State with an opportunity to stop Troy again on a difficult third and long situation for the Trojans. Nutter in the shotgun. 
show and blitz. See if they come after him. And they do send a couple. A flag comes in, and they will blow this play dead. Jacksonville State players clapping as, go, as though it's going against Troy, and it will indeed illegal procedure against the Trojans as that the linebackers walking up to the line of scrimmage evidently caused someone to jump up front for Troy State. Well, Jacksonville State was showing a blitz that time in the middle, and Troy State in an effort to pick up all those oncoming linebackers and linemen unable to get the play off without jumping early. And on the hot read, Brock Nutter was going to try a long one there. We'll see what Troy State goes to here on a third and 15 situation. And yeah, they back him up five to the 45. Troy State will need 15 yards if they want to keep possession of the football. Nutter once again in the shotgun. Jack State once again showing blitz. Nutter pumps once. Will air it out down the near sideline, and the pass is nearly intercepted by Jacksonville State's E. Riles McCullough. And boy, we had some jockeying going on down the near sideline between Daniel O'Brien and the JSU defender. I believe that was Askeree Martin. Well, Brock Nutter rolls right here as they expected Jacksonville State to blitz, and indeed the Gamecocks came with the blitz, but improvising here and spots Daniel O'Brien actually behind the Jacksonville secondary. But as you mentioned, he along with Martin were involved in some significant bumping but no infraction called on either player so troy state punt the football that's matt allen and delvin hugley on the return about a three yard return to the 25 yard line by the way eros mccullough a moment ago almost without interception had a string early this year of six straight games with an interception that streak broken last week at louisiana lafayette timeout on the field troy state still clinging to a two touchdown lead guarantees big brands, not big prices, six months free credit options, smart shopper rebates, free normal alterations, and free gift boxes? Well, who else but Martins? Low prices, customer service, and quality clothing for the whole family. Martins everyday low prices are lower than department store sale prices. Ask about our free credit option. When it comes to saving money on big brands, it's Martins Family Clothing where service is never on sale. Ideas Plus can help you with all your embroidery, screen printing, and promotional needs. We offer a wide variety of apparel, computer mouse stands, pins, plus thousands of other items that can have your organization's name on them. Ideas Plus is a huge selection of merchandise for fundraiser projects, advertising, and to show your school spirit. Ideas Plus is locally owned and operated and has been serving the area for seven years. We are located at 1013 Snow Street in Oxford. So when you're planning your next project, give us a call at Ideas Plus. back at Paul Snow Stadium. JSU trustee Bob Kinnamer looking on tonight. Jacksonville State behind 14 to nothing as we are very late in the first quarter. As the Gamecocks take back over first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. Here's the fullback, Carlo James, as a flag comes in on this play as well. And Carlo James keeps those feet moving out to around the 24 yard line. And looks as though this one will go against the Trojans, offsides. Well, that flag fell early, and it looks as if someone lined up in the neutral zone for Troy State. Jack State picked up about three yards on first down. I'm sure they'll take the penalty. Let's check in once again with Butch Barker. Joined now by Board of Trustee member Red Etheridge. And Red, what exactly does the Board of Trustee member do? 
brokerage board of trustees is very similar to a board of directors in a, in a bank or a large corporation or something. Kind of set some of the policy for the, uh, this college itself and work with the president and try to get the infrastructure and, and capital improvements for the university. Well, let's watch this play and then we'll continue with this. First and ten. First and five, I should say, after the penalty. Stancil going to go deep. And Martin... They tried to get it into him, had good coverage in the secondary, two Troy, Troy State defenders running foot for foot with him. Back down now to Butch Barker. Red again, what are the long-term and short-term goals now for the university that you guys are talking about as trustees? Well, long-term goal as far as enrollment, we, our goal is to get to 10,000 in the next several years. As far as athletic program, Butch, as you well know, being a former player here, the sports program is really the window to the university, the spotlight. And we're trying to get this football team back on schedule and get the win and bring students into the, the stadium, fans back to the college. And if we can do that, we'll get the university back where it should be. Thanks for taking time to come down and join us. Thank you, Butch. All right, Stancil had trouble with the snap and picked it up. And speaking of improvising, Stancil picked up about 10 yards in a Jacksonville State first down. And it looked as though Troy had an excellent chance to take him down behind the line of scrimmage. Well, this is an excellent example of Reggie Stancil's athleticism. As you see the ball squirt loose, and he just breaks not one but two tackles. As you and I were visiting during the last break, this is a big physical quarterback he's upwards of 220 pounds it's amazing that he has retained as much quickness as he has as big an athlete as he is but well, Jack Crow's done a great job of I think really accelerating the process of getting Jacksonville State back to respectability Mickey first and ten for the Gamecocks Stancil has to just throw this one away the pressure was getting to him and Stancil sailed that one out of bounds and and you're right, Phil, Jacksonville State has come very close this year to uh, getting some big upset victories in the Southland Football League, but still coming in at four and five. As we take a look at the passing yard, it's Troy State, of course, with a huge advantage there, 111 to just 18. Well, you look at the Southland Football League losses that the Gamecocks have suffered this year, a three-point loss to Sam Houston State, a four-point loss to Southwest Texas, and a six-point loss to Stephen F. Austin. So this is certainly a, a football team that could be looking at an outside shot at a playoff bid itself had it been able to capture those games. And a couple of those losses, Jacksonville State actually led going into the fourth quarter and saw those leads evaporate down the stretch. As Coach Crow said numerous times, this is a very young football team and those are, I guess, growing pains that you have to go through. And But definitely the improvement is obvious around the entire Southland Football League for, for this football team. I agree with you. And when you've been in a little bit of a down cycle, oftentimes, as you alluded to, when you get a position to win a football game against a quality foe, you just don't quite know how to do it. You don't know how to make the plays, when to make the plays with the game on the line. That comes with experience and getting in those positions, and you've got to get in those positions before you learn how to be a mature football team. Second down and 10. Jacksonville State, three receivers in this formation. Stancil looking, gets the pass away, and Bell makes the catch, breaks the initial tackle, and advances the football down to the Troy State 45-yard line. Herman Bell, a great run after the catch, gets JSU a first down. We're going to see a lot of tackles broken tonight, Mickey, and one of the reasons why, because the players on both teams are going to be wet. Obviously, that was an attempt to make a tackle up high on Jacksonville's bell, and we're going to see these tackles broken all night unless they start making contact around the waist and thigh area. That's where tackles are going to have to be made tonight. And that is the end of the first quarter from Paul Snow Stadium. And through one period, it's been all Troy State on the scoreboard. The Trojans lead the Gamecocks 14 to nothing.
Competition, injuries happen. It's part of the game. And to get back your level of performance takes a lot of hard work, discipline, and the best health care. Health South is the nation's leading provider of outpatient diagnostic, surgery, and rehabilitation services. So we can help you get back fast to the action, the competition, and the glory. We know your body. We understand your spirit. We get you back. There are a lot of good reasons to have insurance. Whether you call them Michael or Ashley, Lexi or Scott. And because you want to be there for them, your State Farm agent is there for you with the Family Insurance Checkup. It allows you to see how your coverage measures up and pick the plan that's right for your family's needs. So call for your free Family Insurance Checkup today. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hey folks, I'm Mike with Food Outlet. You know at Food Outlet we have seven locations in Calhoun County to serve you. And yes, we can save you $20 a week and more on your total food bill when you shop with Food Outlet. That's like a free tank of gas every week when you shop at Food Outlet. You'll find the brands you know and trust, the best meat, the best produce, the best dairy and produce to be had anywhere. Come to see us at Food Outlet. You'll save dollars and thanks. We appreciate your business. In town to watch the Gamecocks? Well, come on in to Cooter Brown's Rib Shack. Cooter Brown's, the recent winner of A Taste of Calhoun County, has delicious tender baby back ribs, barbecue pork, hot wings, chicken served only the way you want it, and much, much more. Cooter Brown's has a wide variety of domestic and imported beers. We are open for lunch and dinner Monday through Saturday, and we are located on Highway 204 in Jacksonville, Alabama. So when you're in the mood for some good food, come on in to Cooter Brown's Rib Shack. Good ribs. Tasty butts. And there you see JSU president Dr. Bill Meehan with his Whoop Troy button on the lapel tonight. Jacksonville State trying to work their way back into this football game. Mickey Shadricks along with Bill Paramore and Phil. Jacksonville State trying to drive the football and get some points on the board, trailing 14 0. They put a couple of good drives together, one stalled on a fourth down play. Now they've got it in Troy State territory again. They can get some points out of this drive. We got ourselves a football game. From the Troy State 45. Here's the handoff to the fullback. James wrapped up, taken down by Troy State's Shelton Felton after a gain of just a couple. I mentioned earlier, Troy State has gone through what seems like an endless procession of outstanding athletes at the defensive line positions. They've turned out several, including last year's Buck Buchanan Award winner, who have all gone on to National Football League stardom. And certainly Al Lucas last year, the latest in a long line of great Troy defensive linemen, coached by a former Lombardi Award winner himself and Tracy Rocker. Hmm. Second down, we'll call it eight yards to go for Jacksonville State. Stancil goes to his third option. It's Herman Bell trying to make a sliding catch at around the 20 yard line and Herman's got great hands, but that would have been a very tough catch. Now Reggie Stancil had Vernon Marable breathing down his neck again here as they set up the play fake. And there you see Marable closing in on Stancil. He may have had to get rid of that ball a moment or two before he won. Almost shades of the Monday night reception a few weeks ago there. Stancil, sophomore out of Moultrie, Georgia. As we mentioned, about 6'1", 215, 220. He comes from a great high school program, Mickey. Moultrie, Georgia is also a hotbed for tremendous college prospects. Stancil got a great career ahead of him. Two more years to go for Jacksonville State. Rifles this to Cedric Allen and a near interception by Chris Archie at the 33-yard line. Well, Stancil fortunate to get that one back, although certainly I don't blame him for throwing Allen's way. He is a fine-looking specimen of an athlete. Watch Stancil square those shoulders up right there and deliver the ball. Really got a lot of velocity on that, or else Archie would have been off to the races. Stancil motioning for Allen to come back for the football. Wanted Cedric to come back upfield just a bit as JSU fails again on a possession play. Kick it back to the Trojans. And the fair catch called for and made by Hayward Skipper as Troy State's defense bends a bit, but they do not break. 
and they get the football back at their own 13-yard line. We'll take a break, come back with more in just a moment. Troy State still leading the Gamecocks 14 to nothing. I've known Buster Miles and his family all my life. Uh, my father worked for him for many, many years as a mechanic. My father always had, you know, nothing but good things to say about him and his dealership, and that's how you know him, is by, you know, working with him. They've been good to me. They took care of my vehicles, and uh, they'll do the same thing for you. They have a great team. Teamwork is uh, important in whatever you do, and they have it here. Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail. We at Dwayne's Furniture Warehouse would like to thank you, our customers, for helping us continue to be your home-owned and operated furniture store in Northeast Alabama. At Dwayne's, we offer name brand furniture at warehouse prices, such as Pulaski, Rose Hill, People Lounger, Therapeutic, Magnolia, Heritage House, and many more. We also have a full line of recliners starting at $99.95. Come see us when you can at Dwayne's Furniture Warehouse, 1810 Noble Street in Anniston. And the cheerleaders and fans, everybody with the rain gear out in full force tonight as we have a steady rain here at Paul Snow Stadium. And I think it's going to be with us for the rest of the evening. Now we saw the radar on the weather channel just to the left of us here in the booth adjacent to us, Mickey, and it looks as if we're socked in for the evening as far as the wet stuff are concerned. So first and ten for... Troy State, handoff right up the middle. That is LeBaron Black on his first carry of the game, and Black crosses the 15 and gets about three yards on first down. Black, one of three tailbacks that Troy State employs, not only Demontre Carter, but along with LeBaron Black and Wayne Thomas, a guy who actually held the starting position at tailback a year ago for Troy State. And Troy getting uh, over a thousand yards rushing between those three. Second down and eight. And here is Black once again. Finds a gaping hole over right tackle. And he's into the JSU secondary where Delvin Hughley had to make the tackle out at the 44 yard line. Great job of blocking by the Troy State lineman that time. A senior-laden offensive line that will be almost completely wiped out to graduation. But here you see LeBaron Black leap through a small crease in that line and then bounce into the secondary. And it's left up to Jacksonville's Hughley to keep the touchdown off the board. Jacksonville State just cannot afford to give up anything else here as you get an idea of just how inclement the weather is and how muddy the playing surface is. What a couple of great backs. One-two punch, as you mentioned, with Carter and Black, and they stay with Black on the ground as he gets a couple of yards. Football came loose, but I think the official's going to say he was down, and that is, will indeed be the call. Well, some indecision there momentarily by the officiating crew as I saw the referee look over at one of the linesmen to see if he had seen anything happen here unusual at the end of this play. Let's see if we can see whether or not the ball bounces out, and obviously it does. Uh, LeBaron Black losing possession at the initial contact here. We may get an even better look at it from the end zone angle on the power play at first contact. Boom, there the ball is, and the, the officials are evidently blinded by the play, unable shielded and unable to see the play. No doubt about that one. Football came loose. Troy with a break. Second down and seven. Heavy rush. Nutter gets the pass off to Black, but right there to greet him is JSU's Dale Gaines as they stop him 
for a gain of maybe one, and this will set up third and long for the Trojans. That's the same play Troy State utilized for a big first down conversion earlier. Laquatus just into the football game in relief of Thaddeus Bouton and Brock Nutter with the hot read on the blitz by Jacksonville State. But the Gamecock linebacker gains, as you mentioned, giving this defense a lift. He really roams from sideline to sideline. I'm sure the Gamecocks are glad to have him back in the lineup. So third and a long five for Troy State. Here's the handoff to Carter, and Carter's got his first down to the JSU 41-yard line after a pickup of nine yards. Demontre Carter really stepped up last week against McNeese State and became a visible leader. He is not a real vocal kind of guy, doesn't say a tremendous amount, and as you see him stepping into the Jacksonville secondary and picking up a first down there, spurred on by a halftime speech from his high school coach down in Pensacola who was visiting as the Trojans have scored 81 points in the first quarter this season. It's been a very strong quarter for them. Yeah, they get off to a quick start and they've done that here tonight and they've got another first down at the JSU 40 here once again is Carter and he can't break the tackle from the Tars to James so he knocks him off his feet behind the line of scrimmage a good time that a good job that time by James as we've got a Jacksonville State player down and we're going to have a stoppage in play but James sifting through here on the stunt and hits Carter low that's the way you've got to tackle Demontre Carter around those ankles or else he'll shuck that tackle and get into the secondary nice job there by James James one of the four seniors in this Jacksonville State secondary this is a relatively young Jacksonville State team however Absolutely. Other than the secondary, Phil, that's they pretty much have a lot back. As you, the injured player, by the way, for Jacksonville State is inside linebacker Cornell Buford, one of 13 seniors on this JSU roster playing his final game here at Pete at Paul Snow Stadium. As you can see, favoring the left ankle, I believe, and hopefully uh, Buford will be okay and maybe be able to get back into this ball game. You'd hate to see this fine senior not be able to finish this football game against Troy State. An awful lot of the players on these two teams know each other, Mickey. They're familiar with each other throughout high school, playing each other throughout the course of their collegiate careers. And, of course, the rivalry itself makes them familiar with one another. So second and 11, previous play lost a yard. Here is Carter finding some daylight up the middle. Boy, a great runner between the tackles. And JSU will have to gang tackle him to get him to the ground at the 34-yard line. And, Phil, speaking of Carter, we mentioned transferring from Auburn after uh, a lot of people thought there for a while he might be the back at Auburn. And, of course, we know the change is occurring there with Terry Bowden as we get another look at the run. But how has his adjustment been at Troy State this Well, year? it took him a little while to break into the rotation. And Larry Blakeney's program has gotten an awful lot of publicity about attracting transfers. Of course, with a 1AA status, you don't have to sit out the year. You become immediately eligible. But Blakeney usually works them in slowly, and Carter is no exception. We'll finish that point in a moment. Troy State, again, trying to convert on third down. But a flag on this play. Demontre Carter was one of the most highly sought after high school players in the country. In fact, Terry Bowden, as you mentioned, won a very publicized recruiting battle over his father for Demontre's services at Florida State and Auburn with a final two battling for him. Uh, the knock against Demontre, as we get the call here, at Auburn was he was not a particularly powerful runner that he was easily knocked off his feet but certainly since he's arrived at Troy State he's been a determined runner that shows surprising power to be 195 pounds. Troy State now their third penalty of the night for 15 yards this backs them up to the JSU 39 where it will be third and nine. Let's check in now with Butch Barker on the sidelines. Buford re-injured the ankle. He's been nursing all year. He won't be back in the first half. They'll recheck it, see if he can play the second half. All right, thanks, Butch, for that injury update. And uh, Carter darts inside the 35 to about the 34. James up to 
Epp out on the tackle there. And this will be fourth down and four yards to go from the JSU 34. Bit of a conservative call that time by Troy State offensive coordinator Don Jacobs. As you see, Carter held to a minimal gain there. Gain tackling by the Jacksonville State stop unit. Jimmy Johnson in on that play, but a third and nine call. A draw play doesn't go for the necessary yardage, and Matt Allen comes on to kick it away. Looking to pin Jacksonville State deep. Delvin Hughley standing back at his 10. A very high kick and a little too much mustard on that one. It'll sell in and out of the end zone and Jacksonville State touchback. They'll start first and 10 from the 20. The Gamecocks with the football, but still trailing 14 to nothing. Remember when we were undergraduates at Jacksonville State? We had professors with doctorates teaching the courses. It's the same today. The Alumni Association helps support these high academic standards. Experience Southern hospitality in a historic Victorian setting in downtown Anniston, Alabama. The Victoria, a country inn, restaurant, and hotel. For reservations, call 800-260-8781. Celebrate the grand opening of the all-new Quintard Mall. There's something for everyone with exciting new stores, stadium-style movie cinemas, and a fabulous food court. Register for prizes to be given away every week, including our grand prize, an all-new 2000 GMC Sonoma truck from Ron Newton Pontiac Cadillac GMC. Get ready to shop at the all-new Quintard Mall in Oxford. Now open. Eight minutes, 22 seconds left in our second quarter. Jacksonville State with the football, getting set to scrimmage from the 20-yard line, first and 10. As you can see on the screen there, the field between the 20s from 20 to 20 is definitely going to get muddier and more slippery as the night wears on. As the rain continues to fall at Paul Snow Stadium. Option play. Here's the pitch to Roger Bell checking in the game for the first time. And Bell is taken down right at the line of scrimmage. Now, Mickey, you made reference to the playing field. We may literally have John Facenda's frozen tundra here before we finish tonight because temperatures are down in the lower 30s right now as you get another look at Troy State stringing out this option play. A lot of white jerseys out there. Nazir Yamini, Nick Colbert combining to run Stanchel out of bounds. But, yeah, the temperatures are going to get uh, even colder and the wind chill factor, I would assume, down in the teens. It certainly feels that cold here above the playing surface. Very tough weather conditions here tonight. Jacksonville State actually have had some success this year in the rain. They beat Nichols State in a very rainy night. And, of course, Northwestern on homecoming just a few weeks ago. Rondy Rogers on this second down carry. Not much up the middle as... Trojans very stingy with that yardage up front. Big number 99, Shelton Felton, there on the pile. You mentioned Tracy Rocker earlier, the Troy State defensive line coach. He uses a rotation of linemen, as you see Felton making initial contact there, along with O.C. Yumanyora and Troy State trying to keep fresh players on the defensive front. And Rocker does a good job of rotating those guys. So a possession play for Jacksonville State. Third down, seven yards to go from their own 23. Stancil looking to his left. Dumps it off to Martin in the flat, or Bowie, I should say, to pass a little high, incomplete, and JSU will be forced to punt the football. Got to give Troy State credit for a coverage sack there, as you see Stancil 
admonishing his wide receivers, hey, look for a dead spot, find it, and I'll get you the football here. Stancil does a good job of buying some extra time. As the protection finally breaks down, he gets outside the pocket, but unable to find a receiver downfield, actually trying to hit his safety valve there, as you mentioned, Bowie on that particular attempt. And Howard gets away an end over end kick. And here is Skipper. Gets a wall on the far side. And Natasha James finally catches up to him as a flag comes in well after the play. But a big return for Haywood Skipper and pending the what this penalty is all about. Actually, there are two flags on the field, one back around where the punt was received. So this great return by Skipper may be coming back. Troy State has had some success in special teams play, especially in returning punts and field goals. And Skipper has done a great job for them as we get the call here. It looks as if this one is indeed going to come back. See Larry Blakeney discussing it with the officials. We'll see if we can pick it up here. Looks like a block in the back. There's one right there, and there it is right there. Troy State, number 26, Neil Oates, Jr., the freshman, appears to be the guilty party there, and it negates a long return. And there is the call. Actually, there were two blocks in the back. Jacksonville State will take the one that occurred furthest upfield. Timeout on the field once again. Back to Paul Snow Stadium in just a moment. Maybe you've heard our name but can't quite recall our face. State is a great place to live, study, and have fun. We're known as the friendliest campus in the South. Our goal when we started over a century ago was to provide a quality education at a reasonable cost. We still do that. For more information, call Jacksonville State University at 782-5268 or 1-800-231-5291. Monday, August 16th. Four classic hits DJs go missing. And never mind, we found them. Z93.1. More classic hits. More ways to win. Join Wild Bill in the morning with the Zoo Crew, Randy McDowell and Suzanne Witt. Then spend the afternoon with Steve, the Case Man Casey. It's the all-new classic hits. Z93.1. And we are back at Paul Snow Stadium as the rain seems to be falling a little harder now as we are about midway through the second quarter. Troy State with a 14-0 lead and back on offense. First and 10 after the penalty negated a great return by Haywood Skipper. Instead of first and 10, or first and goal, I should say, Troy State will now have it first and 10 back at their 34. That's a big penalty because the Trojans could attack on another score there, and that might be the death knell to Jacksonville State's upset hopes. Nutter looking to throw on first down, swings it out in the flat, and the pass incomplete intended for Thad Bouton. Actually surprised at how well both teams have been able to throw the football thus far, Mickey. They have had some success through the airways despite these conditions. And again, let us stress to you how wet, how cold, how damp it is. And as you mentioned, the rain peppering down across the way, some of it of the frozen variety. So second down and 10. I guess you've got to keep the passing game in your arsenal. You can't become too predictable. And both teams able to do that so far tonight as a flag comes in before this play. 
Now the lines judge immediately calling that infraction. Troy State definitely racking up the penalty yardage here in the first half. Coach Blakely not real happy with it as well. Encroachment against Troy State as we take a look now at the penalty situation so far tonight. There you see Troy with five penalties for 30 yards. Jacksonville State penalized only one time here in the first half, but despite those penalties, Troy State with a two touchdown advantage. Screen pass to Carter, cuts back against the grain, a great move, Natasha James there to take him off his feet at the 32 yard line. Well, Jonathan Carter's blocking was actually set up to the outside that time. He saw something inside that he liked an awful lot and evidently saw that hole close early as, as you see the Troy State lineman out front there as the play designed on a wide receiver screen to go down the hash mark. But James closing very quickly for the Gamecocks and making a nice play. Jacksonville State's defense has really played well here, Mickey, after the first two plays from scrimmage for Troy State. You wipe those plays out, we've got ourselves a scoreless slugfest here. Troy State 2 of 4 on third down conversions. They've got a third and 12 here. Jacksonville State showing blitz once again as Nutter drops to throw. Deep down the middle, the pass incomplete intended for Adrian Moore, the tight end, coming over to attempt to break it up. Jacksonville State's Maxwell Thurman and the JSU defense holds here on third down and Troy State will be forced to punt. Adrian Moore found the seam that time in the Jacksonville zone as you see him slip behind the defenders, but the ball hung a bit on Brock Nutter. The wind is swirling as we see the flags in the end zone. The wind's uh, changing directions from time to time here tonight, and it looked as if that one got up under, uh, the wind got up under that pass. And here's the punt from Allen, a good high kick. Delvin Hughley will return it. And Hughley will step out of bounds at the 36 yard line after a return of eight yards. So Jacksonville State, first and 10, pretty good field position out of 36, six minutes exactly to go here in the second quarter as the Gamecocks have been able to rush the football. They've been in the red zone a couple of times, but yet to come up with any points here this evening. You saw Matt Allen running off the field after delivering a 40 plus yard punt there for the Trojans in these conditions. Matt Allen's a senior as is Lawrence Tynes. Matt Allen actually played seven man football in high school, was not recruited by anyone other than Troy State. So first and 10, JSU option play. Here's the pitch to Roger Bell. Makes a good cut to get two, maybe three yards. Taken down by Troy State's Jimmy McLean, the junior out of Enterprise, Alabama. That's another hotbed for high school football talent. Jimmy McLean, Nick Colbert, both those guys from Enterprise. And an excellent job of delivering the pitch that time by Stanchel. Antonio Thompson making first contact there, coming up from his cornerback position, and then McLean finishing off the stop. As you see, a good shot of Thompson there, who has turned into one of the leaders in the second year for the Trojans, especially after those early season injuries to a couple of starters. Troy State averaging just over nine yards per play. Jacksonville State just under four yards. Huge advantage there for the Trojans. Flag comes in on this play as the pass was intended for Jimmy McCoy. Had a chance to make the catch and pick up some yardage, but could not hold on to it. But this flag thrown back behind the line of scrimmage. And as you see, it's just coming back. That was Tim Betts who was held on that particular play. I didn't pick up the uh, guilty party on the Jacksonville side, but Tim Betts, the transfer from South Carolina, one of the top pass rush specialists in the Southland Football League coming from the outside. The Jacksonville State tackle had no choice but to grab Betts by the waist or else he was going to get Stancil for a big loss. And this is a big penalty. Going to back the Gamecocks up to the 28-yard line as we try to pick it up there at the left side of your screen. There you there see the hole. the tackle right there. And uh, it was, in fact, Raymond Little who was the guilty party for Jacksonville State. You won't see many complaints there by Jack Crow and his staff. I'm sure they've instructed their offensive linemen, hey, if you're beaten on a play like that and your quarterback's going to take one from the blind side, tackle the defender. We'll take the 10 yards. And hope the official does not see it. Exactly. But they caught it that time as play occurred in the wide open field. Here's the pass across 
the middle, Roger Bell. That's a tough play to execute for Reggie Stancil as he was under heavy pressure that time. Betts again, once more, one of the top pass rush specialists in the entire country in Division I AA football, and he is starting to gain the advantage now as you see his lateral quickness, and Stancil absorbs the lick there. Betts from Pensacola, same uh, area as Devontre Carter, yet another hotbed for high school football, the Pensacola area. Yeah, both these coaches know where to go for, for good talent. Coach Crow and his staff didn't have much time to recruit this past offseason. They hope to do much better this year. Stancil, under some pressure, will keep it himself. And Reggie makes a great individual effort and gets first down yardage across midfield to the Troy State 44-yard line. And what an outstanding effort for, from Reggie Stancil on a third and long situation. Well, it's scary to think how good this kid could be by the time his eligibility is expired here at Jacksonville State. You'll watch him buy time, looking for a receiver, looking for a receiver. Troy State coming with a blitz there. So once he gets past that first wave of tacklers, once he gets outside of Yamini's grasp, there's no one there until the secondary members turn around and see Stancil rumbling with the ball. And they're finally able to bring him down, but not until he picks up 20-plus yards and a first down for Jacksonville State. Big conversion, Mickey. Reggie Stancil, before his career is done, has an excellent chance to become the all-time leader in total yardage here at Jacksonville State. That honor held right now by Montressa Kirby. But Stancil will not get much yardage on this first down play as Troy State defended it very well, actually taking him down for a loss back to the 45-yard line on the stop that time, Jimmy McClain. You know, you brought up Montressa Kirby, uh, certainly an outstanding athlete here at Jacksonville State as we get another look here at Stancil trying to make the most uh, basically nothing there at that play never really got started. But I personally think Stanchel is a little bit bigger and better athlete than even Kirby was, who was one of the more versatile stars Jacksonville State's had. Well, we've got another timeout on the field with four minutes exactly to go here in the second quarter. And Jacksonville State trying to mount something here late in the first half, trailing 14 to nothing. And yeah, Montressa Kirby obviously playing in a totally different offense under former coach Mike right. Williams. And Coach Crow obviously wants to come in and, and be a lot more balanced in uh, their offensive attack. And of course, they've been heavily weighted to the rushing game this year, Phil, as we mentioned, Jack State rushing for almost twice as many yards as they throw the football. But uh, they'll take that. If you're gonna, if you're gonna have one part of your offense outshine the other, you want to run the football. That is, you've, you've got to do that to have teams respect you. And I don't think Jacksonville State had that respect in the last few years. Well, I agree with you, and I think Larry Blakeney's philosophy very much mirrors that of Jack Crow. And I think both of them are influenced by the football process that they encountered at Auburn and, and Pat Dye's beliefs of running the football and stopping the run offensively. And yes, you want some balance. You don't want any to be able to key on your running game. You want to keep them honest, but on third and two, there's little question what Jack Crow and Larry Blakeney want to do with the football. They want to run and pick up the first down. Second down and 11 for JSU. Football just inside the Troy State 45-yard line. Gamecocks needing some points to get a little momentum heading into halftime. And early movement from the fullback, Rondi Rogers, and this play will be coming back as JSU will be penalized. We've had several infractions tonight as we get the call against Jacksonville State, but from a turnover standpoint, this game's been relatively played, uh, played relatively well. Absolutely, considering the conditions. You and I were talking before the game about the possibility of a lot of turnovers and miscues, but we really have not had that so far in this game as the penalty marked off to the 49-yard line where it will be second and 16 now for Jacksonville State. Of course, Troy State did commit one error that was not detected by the officials. The carry by LeBaron Black didn't hurt Jacksonville State as far as the overall score is concerned because the Trojan drive eventually bogged down, but no turnovers by either team to this point, and we're at the uh, nearly at halftime. It really is a, a testament for the concentration that we get the call from the officials of both teams and how well coached they are to be able to run their offense. And, and frankly, both of them appear to have uh, used most of their entire arsenal here in the first half. They haven't shied away from throwing the ball and to uh, be able to maintain the level of concentration that they have and not 
leave it on the ground is a, it's a tremendous compliment to both teams. So now we're set to go. Second, 16. And Stancil will drop back to throw it. And it's incomplete. Once again, Quincy Bowie, the intended receiver. The play would have not gained much at all, however, had Bowie been able to hold on. Well, you're right. We get another good shot of Stanchel here rolling to the right. Gets good protection this time, squares up and delivers the ball. And you'd certainly like to think under normal circumstances, Bowie would be able to catch that football. But I think uh, you see the very modest numbers for Reggie Stanchel, three out of 12 for 12 yards. But he had that ball dropped and a couple of other balls certainly could have been caught by Jacksonville receivers. So another possession play for JSU, third and 17. Stancil gets the pass away. Bell was open, threw it a bit behind him down around the 33-yard line. It would have been very close to a first down, and Reggie would like to have that one back. Well, here's Stancil again with a floating pocket to the right. Good protection once more. Squares up, however, throws that one to the inside of his intended receiver, Bell, and fortunate to get that one back. In fact, the Troy State secondary playing the receiver instead of the ball, or they may have had an opportunity for an interception, and Jacksonville State is held. So once again, the Troy defense bends a little bit, but they do not break. They maintain the shutout so far, and Howard does a good job of Punting this one inside the 20-yard line, it will be down at around the 10, and Troy State will take over first and 10 just outside their 10-yard line with 324 now left here in the first half. Jacksonville State would love to get a turnover here. If they could get a quick score, get some help from Troy State, and get back in this ball game, down 14 nothing. certainly it's still anybody's game, but the uh, Gamecocks could certainly use a lift here with some points prior to halftime. Troy State would be content to run out the clock here, I would assume, with the ball pinned deep in their own territory, but they're going to have to get some first downs if they plan to do so. Let's see how the Trojans play it here. First and 10. They'll go with the running game. Demontre Carter bobbled the pitch, but regained control of it and brings it out to the 13-yard line for a pickup of about three yards. Now just a simple power sweep here as you're right. Demontre Carter lost the handle on that momentarily, able to pull it back down and pick up a minimal gain. Clock continuing to run now inside three minutes. Carter now eight carries for 40 yards on the night. They give him two on that previous play. Second and eight, Carter gets the call again, breaks it outside, gets first down yardage and more. He rouses McCullough over to shove him out of bounds at the JS at the Troy State 32 yard line and that will stop the clock with 2.41 now. One of the things that makes Demontre Carter so dangerous is his burst of speed, the quickness that he has. You saw that time he was able to get outside the containment. The downright speed is not so overwhelming for Demontre, though certainly he's not a slow running back by any stretch of the imagination, but he runs a 4-5, four, 4-6 four, or so. However, the burst of quickness over a 10-yard stretch, he's one of the quickest running backs in the nation. So Troy State moving it out to the 32-yard line. Still got some time here. Nutter, play action on first down. And the pass is incomplete. They rule it incomplete. Jonathan Tomlin, the sophomore tight end, had it in his grasp for a moment, but a JSU defender came in to jar it loose. Now the field judge emphatic with his decision that that was, in fact, and incomplete pass. We'll get another look at it and have the benefit of instant replay. And it looks as if Tomlin may have come down with that football. And Jacksonville State catching a tough break once again there as the ball ruled incomplete. So it'll be second and 10 for Troy State. Bang, bang play. So after giving up two quick scores in the first five minutes of the game, we have neither team has been able to put any points on the board as we are very late in the first half. And Troy State now will call a timeout. 
as Nutter will head over to the Trojan sideline to talk this one over. And Phil, they do have plenty of time, two and a half minutes, and they've ran the football out from deep in their own territory out to about the 32. So it'll be interesting to see how Troy State plays it here. If they could get more points going into the locker room, that would be a demoralizing blow to Jacksonville State. Well, according to our stats, Troy State has a couple of timeouts left, and if they elect to try and utilize those timeouts, they certainly have uh, enough time remaining to get into scoring position. These are very inclement conditions, but Lauren Ty Lawrence Tynes has an extremely strong leg, and I would say he'd be a threat from 45 yards or so in. And... Uh, any JSU officials out for this big game tonight with Troy State. Dr. Watts, a very well-respected professor here at JSU. Good night to use the president's pass into the private suites, my friend. Absolutely. And there you see those fans bearing the elements. And as you mentioned in the beginning, Phil, the folks that have come out and in these conditions, they are huge fans of of these teams really amazing when you get a look at the numbers here troy state throwing for 115 yards on the night the bulk of those coming on the first two plays from scrimmage in which troy was able to score a touchdown on both of them meanwhile stancil been held to just 34 yards via the airways you're right it's amazing there are this many people here on a cold frigid night in jacksonville second and ten nutter back to throw again pressured Eludes the rush, dumps it off incomplete as Jacksonville State had good pressure applied by C.J. Boyd, the freshman, and it'll be third down. Another one of the coverage sacks there as Jacksonville State had excellent coverage on all the Troy State receivers in that pattern. You'll get a look here at what Brock Nutter saw as he saw some pressure and rolled to his right, tried to improvise and work a little game there with his tight end Jonathan Tomlin, but they were unable to do so and Brock wisely threw it away. So third and 10 for Troy State. And another penalty flag is a premature movement up front once again. Seen that several times tonight. Looks as though this one is going to be stepped off against the Trojans, and it will be. Another false start against Troy State. Well, a third down now in 15 situation. You may see Troy utilize a draw play here, run some clock, and kick it out, although they'd like to get a first down, obviously. Third and 15. Let's see how the Trojans approach this, can, this play. And Carter darts out near a first down to the 42-yard line taken down by JSU's Nico Willis. Well, Troy State did indeed go with the draw, the delay sprint draw, and Carter making one tackler miss, then bouncing it outside. Very near his first down, held just shy, it appears, although the officials look now as if they're going to stop the clock and measure the game to make certain he doesn't have the first down. From our vantage point, it looks as if he's a half yard or so shy, but Demontre Carter showing once again why he is one of the best backs in the Southland Football League. There you get a look at the senior corner for Jacksonville State, Delvin Hughley. What a career that young man has had, and we will be seeing him on Sundays next year. A great cover man for Jacksonville State. They stretch the chains, and as you mentioned, Phil, it is short by about half a yard, and it'll be fourth down. Good job by the officials, however, to measure that gain and make absolutely certain because as the hash marks and the line markers are starting to disappear here, we see the, the Jacksonville State cheerleaders and the mascot enjoying a little sideline festivities. But good job there by the officials to measure the game because if it's a first down, Troy State still retains possession. Instead, they'll have to drop back into punt formation, and I would expect Jacksonville State to load up and try to block this one. Well, the Gamecocks. And Delvin Hughley back by himself to return the kick from Matt Allen. Gamecocks load up the line of scrimmage. 
Troy State letting the clock run down as far as it can before they snap it. And good protection and a great kick by Allen. Hugley driven all the way back to his 10-yard line. And good coverage as well. Hustling down on special teams for the Trojans, Lee Walls. And Jacksonville State will start from deep in their own territory, but we do have another penalty flag on the play. And this one going against Jacksonville State. Is it not amazing the agility and athleticism of today's athletes? Lee Walls is 6'7", 305 pounds, and sprints down on punt coverage and makes the tackle. It is scary when you think about, this. You, as you're right, the size and speed of today's athletes. There you see the penalty blocking the back on JSU, and that'll move the Gamecocks half the distance back to the six-yard line. It'll be first down with a minute 36 now to play in the first half, and I'm sure Jacksonville State will want to be extremely careful in this situation. And Jack State indeed needs to take extra caution with the football down here deep in their own territory. They don't want to give the Trojans anything here just before halftime. They're still in this football game trailing only 14-0. Troy State all 11 defenders at the line of scrimmage. The pitch to Rondi Rogers and Rogers picks up about three yards to the nine yard line and Jacksonville State will just let the clock continue to wind down. And Troy State with a couple of timeouts unable to force a punting situation here evidently content to let the clock run out. So second down and seven for Jacksonville State. Hand off right up the middle to Rondi Rogers. Darts forward for about three yards to the 13. And now yeah, yeah. we have a timeout called by Troy State. If they're able to stop the Gamecocks on this next play, they'll utilize their final timeout and force a punting situation, either go after the punt or see if they can get a good return and get field position, possibly get three points or more. Jacksonville State will have it third and three when play resumes. As you see there, 54 seconds left in the first half. Good shot of Mark Fleetwood on the Troy State sideline a moment ago. There's Jack Crow and the brain trust of the Jacksonville State program. Mike Bobo there with the headsets on, the former quarterback at the University of Georgia, the uh, quarterback's coach for Jack Crow, who has assembled a very good staff here at Jacksonville State. A couple of those staff members used to have some uh, ties uh, with the Troy State Trojans. Ironically enough, a couple of Troy State Trojan staff members also spent time here at Jacksonville. Don Jacobs, the offensive coordinator, spent some time here prior to arriving at Troy with Larry Blakeman. And defensive coordinator Greg Stewart, who there you get a good look at Greg Stewart, actually coached here under Bill Burgess several years ago, then came back when Coach Crow got the job here. And Greg Stewart was a starting nose tackle for Troy State for four years back in the mid-80s and actually has a couple of national championship rings during his career at Troy State. And, of course, Willie Slater, the offensive coordinator for Jacksonville State, was a coach in those years. Reggie Stancil will get the first down on third down. Nifty running by Stancil shoved out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Well, so much for forcing that punting situation as Mr. Stancil took care of that option as he rides the ball into the fullback and then makes well, yet another one of those cuts on a dime here. How he's able to maintain his footing on this field as it continues to degenerate is amazing, but it's a first down for him. And now Jacksonville State may try and get more themselves after the ball ended up out of bounds and stopped the clock. So first and 10 for Jacksonville State as they move it out to the 27-yard line. Stancil puts it in the air. Safe pass out in the flats to Herman Bell. And Herman, good yards after the catch, picks up seven yards to the 34-yard line. And the clock continues to wind. That may be our final play of the half right there. They're not going to mark it set, ready for play until inside 25 seconds. And we'll see if Jack State elects to use another play here. That may be it. 
Reggie Stancil there, seven carries for 66 yards. Not been very productive through the air, as we pointed out, but has been very effective in making things happen, rushing the football. Well, that will be the final play of the first half here from Paul Snow Stadium as both teams head into the locker room after a very interesting first half of play here. Troy State leading 14 to nothing. Both those touchdowns coming right off the bat in the first two plays from scrimmage for Troy State. But since then, neither team able to put any points on the board. So after a rough beginning, the Jack State Gamecocks still in this football game. We'll take a break. Much to come from halftime here at Paul Snow Stadium. We'll be back in a moment. Who guarantees big brands? Not big prices, six months free credit options, smart shopper rebates, free normal alterations, and free gift boxes? Well, who else but Martin's? Low prices, customer service, and quality clothing for the whole family. Martin's everyday low prices are lower than department store sale prices. Ask about our free credit option. When it comes to saving money on big brands, it's Martin's Family Clothing, where service is never on sale. Alpha Insurance asks, what do you want to be when you grow up? A physical therapist. Alpha knows how important it is for our children to be able to pursue their dreams. A writer. A life insurance policy from Alpha can help make it possible. A kindergarten teacher. By providing the protection and financial security. An artist. Your family needs. A veterinarian. Our Alpha family would like to remind you to protect your family with life insurance and... Call Alpha! At Dwayne's Furniture Warehouse, we strive to save you money in all your furniture needs, such as a four-drawer chest, $39.95, lighted curios, $159, three-piece living room set, $4.99, five-piece dinette, $179, five-piece bedroom suit, $319. Folks, we don't need a George Washington's Mother's Brother's Birthday Sale to save you money. We do it every day. Come see us when you can at Dwayne's Furniture Warehouse, 1810 Noble Street, Anniston. I wouldn't think of going on the field without buckling up. You shouldn't think of driving without buckling your seatbelt. This public service announcement is brought to you by TV24, Jacksonville State University, and the Alabama State Troopers, asking you to please buckle up every time you drive. Integrity, innovation, accountability, and community commitment. That's how Touchstone Energy Cooperatives bring customers, large and small, state-of-the-art technology at affordable rates. Touchstone Energy Cooperatives already serve millions of businesses and homes all across America. Brought to you by your local member-owned Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. And we are back at Paul Snow Stadium here at halftime in the battle for the old school bell between Jacksonville State and Troy State. The Trojans out to a 14 to nothing lead. Mickey Shadrick back with you at halftime, and we are pleased to be joined now by a very special halftime guest, a face I'm sure most of our viewers will recognize tonight, Randy Owen of the group Alabama. And Randy, welcome into the booth tonight. Appreciate you coming in and spending a few moments with us. And a lot of people around the Southeast may not realize you're a graduate of Jacksonville State back in the early 70s, so you've got a special interest in checking out this big rivalry tonight. Oh, yeah, this is uh, very special for me. I mean, just to be here, I, uh, this is just a, a great band. And, uh, and, of course, Troy State has a good band, too, and a, and a great band. I mean, it's two great bands, but it's two great uh, schools, and uh, I'm very proud to be here. And uh, I, uh, I'm proud that I got my education here at JSU, and it's very for somebody like myself to be able to graduate and uh, get a degree is a very special thing. And of course, a lot of success, uh, as, as everyone knows, with the, with the band Alabama. We will talk about that a little bit more in a moment, but you're also very active in in what goes on here at Jacksonville State. Talk a little bit about your involvement there. <laughs> uh, well, I'm just kind of getting my feet wet. I'm, uh, there's a lot of things going on, uh, obviously, with the Board of Trustees. It's, uh, 
pull them closer. <laughs> okay. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, we're just trying to make things a lot better for the school. And uh, I'm very, I'm just kind of novice at this. I'm trying to learn from some people who know a lot more about this than I do. But uh, my heart's in the right place, and uh, I'm trying to get accustomed to what goes on here and learn more about what, you know, what we need to do and where we're hopefully going. Well, a lot of changes have been going on, as I'm, as I'm sure you've kept up with. Jack Crow has, I think, made a lot of improvements here for Jacksonville State. The record's four and five coming into this game, but Jacksonville State's been in just about every game this year, and I think the future looks very good for this program. Well, if we get a couple of breaks uh, this year, we have won at I know of two games I saw that yeah. were heartbreakers, and, and that makes a lot of difference for the kids. And I, I guess the big thing I'm... I hope that the seniors know that uh, we alumni appreciate their efforts this year. It's been, uh, you know, uh, hopefully they know that. And I know a lot of people appreciate their efforts. And uh, hopefully we'll have some freshmen coming in and some transfers or whatever the coach throw and his staff uh, see fit to do that will be very uh, beneficial for our program here. And the fine school, and uh, I definitely think we're on the right road to, uh, to where we need to go. Randy, talk a little bit about this rivalry. I know over the years you've watched it closely, and Jacksonville State actually leads the all-time series, but they've had some tough luck the last few years. Troy's really dominated as of late, but do you have some special well, memories of this series? Well, things like that happen. You know, it's uh, you know we've been going through changes, and uh, and uh, it just takes. Uh, I mean, those kind of things that happen when you have a rivalry like this. I mean, sometimes it, most of the games have been close over the years, but uh, and some have been heartbreakers, of course. So. And we've been we've benefited from some of those heartbreaks, so, but that's it's a, a great program, it's a great rivalry. So I, I hate to see this be the hopefully this won't be the last game that Troy State and Jack State play. But uh, I was telling my son coming down here, it's one of those things that uh, hopefully we can see. You know, uh, hopefully uh, I'm just proud that I could be here. I mean, whatever the score is, I think it's a very special thing for us alumni. Well, Randy, uh, we appreciate the time here at halftime. Very quickly, give us an update on what's going on with the band, Alabama. Well, uh, started in January working on a new CD, and uh, I finished that uh, last week, and uh, thank God it's over. <laughs> uh, it'll be released uh, January 15th, and, and, and with all the touring and everything, that's really, I, I, I don't think I've ever put any more into it than this. It's, uh, very special piece of music, and uh, but uh, I'm here tonight uh, for the guys that play football and Coach Crow and all of them, and of course all the sports program and the, and the school itself. Because I'm an alumni, I'm very proud to be a graduate of JSU, and uh, very honored to be here with y'all, and uh, appreciate what y'all do. Well, Randy, thanks a lot for your time. Enjoy the rest of the game. Uh, I hope we enjoy it. That's what we want to do. All right, Randy Owen of the group Alabama and, of course, a graduate of Jacksonville State University. Take a break. Come back with more halftime activities from Paul Snow Stadium in just a moment. Maybe you've heard our name but can't quite recall our face. found anyone as nice to be around and to, to treat you any kinder than Buster and Matt Moss. So if you live 30 miles or 100 miles away, I would advise you to come to Heflin and trade with them. I'm well satisfied. When I get ready to trade again, I'll be back to see them again. I'd say right quick, uh, if a person wants to buy a car, used or new, buy it from Buster Miles, Matt Miles. They'll treat you nice. you were here? Alabama's Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail. I was 
was so young then and so proud to be at Jacksonville State. The gem of the hills, the friendliest campus in the South. Today, JSU does so much with scholarships and excellence in teaching. I'm not so young anymore, but I'm still proud to be a member of the Alumni Association. Welcome back, Paul Snow Stadium on the campus of Jacksonville State University. We're tonight the Troy State Trojans enjoying a 14 to nothing halftime lead over the home standing Gamecocks. Phil Paramore here joined with Troy State Athletic Director Johnny Williams. Coach Williams, a couple of early strikes here, or we've got an even Steven scoreless battle. Yeah, and I don't, I, they saved those plays all year. It's the first couple of times I've seen trick plays, but uh, we're very fortunate to be ahead and uh, look for an exciting second half. Well, obviously, there are an awful lot of exciting things in the very very near future for Troy State. The imminent move to Division 1A now finally coming to, to fruition as next year some big names on the Troy State schedule. Yeah, and of course, you know, next time we tee it up next season, we'll be against Nebraska, the first game, uh, of course, the Appalachian State. We've still got Jacksonville State on our schedule too, but uh, Miami along with Maryland. But more important than that, though, these next three to four weeks, uh, I think we got a tremendous opportunity here to play for a national championship. I'm real proud for Coach Blady and the football staff that what they've been able to put together because uh, tremendous accomplishments to get us to this point to uh, hope the next week to go into the playoffs. Well, and as always, the process of an athletic program ever-changing, ever-improving, and the facilities at Troy State, no exception. The football stadium has already undergone a massive facelift. Even more expansion is on the uh, horizon. And in between then, some other sports also getting some improvements as the Division 1A process continues, although most of these other sports have long been competing in Division 1A. That's correct. You know, other sports are competing in Division 1. Uh, you know, we're in the process of building a new tennis facility, facility and also a new uh, softball field. Uh, you know, we're exploring the possibility of expanding our baseball stadium, which is something we're in the middle of a fundraising campaign for now. Uh, and, of course, it's an ever it's an evolving process. You always have to improve your facilities, and that's really a crucial area for us to become competitive within one A. We've got to continue to upgrade our facilities, and uh, you know something we work every day on. Well, Troy State athletics as a whole, the window, if you will, for the university, it is the most visible aspect of Troy State University, and certainly you want to be successful in all facets. It is. We did a study not long ago uh, for one month. Uh, in the state of Alabama, 68% of everything that was written about Troy State University came through athletics. Uh, we're definitely not the most important things about it, important about it, most important aspect of our university, but we are probably one of the, mo the, the most visible. And, uh, you know, so we're, we're excited about uh, hopefully getting more exposed to our university and help our university, our community grow. And not only our uh, the town of Troy, but all of southeast Alabama as we move into Division I. It's an overall move. It's not just an athletic and football move. It's to help the whole university grow. Johnny Williams, athletic director at Troy State University. We'll take a quick break and come back. It's halftime in Jacksonville, 14 0 Troy State. Remember when we were undergraduates at Jacksonville State? We had professors with doctorates teaching the courses. It's the same today. The Alumni Association helps support these high academic standards. There are a lot of good reasons to have insurance. Whether you call them Michael or Ashley, Lexi or Scott. And because you want to be there for them, your State Farm agent is there for you with the Family Insurance Checkup. It allows you to see how your coverage measures up and pick the plan that's right for your family's needs. So call for your free Family Insurance Checkup today. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Buster Miles Chevrolet and Buster Miles Ford. Uh, I've had work done with both places, and I would recommend them to anybody. And they give them good service and be reasonable about it. Every time our car needs service, we come to Buster Miles, and they take care of us right away. They make you feel like you're part of a family, and we really appreciate that. Buster Miles Ford treats you like you want to be treated, whether it's service or sales. They treat you right.
Wish you were here? Alabama's Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail. Monday, August 16th. Four classic hits DJs go missing. And never mind, we found them. Z93.1. More classic hits. More ways to win. Join Wild Bill in the morning with the Zoo Crew, Randy McDowell and Suzanne Witt. Then spend the afternoon with Steve, the Case Man Casey. It's the all-new classic hits. Z93.1. Back at Paul Snow Stadium at halftime, Jacksonville State trailing the Trojans of Troy State 14 to nothing. Mickey Shadricks and Phil Paramore back with you at halftime. And Phil, what an interesting first half it was. What a quick start there for Troy State getting out in front 14 to nothing. Looked like it might be a rough night for Jacksonville State, but the Gamecocks able to settle down, not get any points, but they're obviously still in this football game. Well, there's no question about it. And as we were talking at halftime, had Troy State not been able to convert those two long passes early, we'd have ourselves an even Stephen football game. I think you got to be very pleased if you're Jacksonville State in that your defense did not turn it. The coaches got together, settled this football team down, and they're one score away from being, one play away from being back to even again. And they have move the football just haven't been able to score any points yet let's take a look at the first half highlights and boy did they come quick here tonight at Paul Snow Stadium Brock Nutter on the first play from scrimmage finding Jonathan Carter open for the first touchdown well that play along with play number two set up by play fakes to Demontre Carter the all everything running back for Troy State this is Thaddeus Bouton the fullback finding Jonathan Carter wide open in the end zone and once again it's Demontre Trey Carter, who is setting up the big play. Now that's a Jacksonville State completion there as the Gamecocks using the running and throwing of Reggie Stanchel. And here you see him display his elusiveness and tackle breaking ability, picking up a 20 plus yard gain for Jacksonville State. And Stanchel and the Gamecocks picking up positive yardage on the corners with the option, but unable to break the goal line. Yeah, Reggie Stancil not very efficient throwing the football here in the first half, Phil, but he has gotten some things done rushing it. Well, you're right, and Reggie Stancil is going to be a key for Jacksonville State in the second half. They have to get something going in the passing game, however. You see a look at the team numbers here. Troy State enjoying slight advantages in practically all of them except for rushing yards. Those 115 yards through the air coming on the basis of those two plays, basically, to begin the football game. Everything else, pretty much even Steven. Neither team has turned the football over despite these inclement conditions. Yeah, time of possession just about even, but it is a two-touchdown advantage for Troy State here at halftime. Well, Phil, for Jacksonville State, they feel like they've got to, they've got to feel like at halftime they're still in this game, as we mentioned, just trailing by two scores. We're going to step aside for a break. Still to come, of course, the second half of this great rivalry between Troy State